Well, when I got started, uh, I wanted some money. My father was a truck driver, made a nice home for us, but there was 50 cents a week allowance wasn't enough for me. Bloomington, Minnesota, population 86,000, is a moderately sized suburb of Minneapolis. In the land of retail, Bloomington has one of the first Target stores in existence, T5. There's a Walmart, Sam's Club, Hobby Lobby, Home Depot, Ikea, a couple dozen car dealerships, an equal amount of hotels, plus every major fast food restaurant. And the grand poopa of it all, Mall of America, a four million square foot mecca of shopping and entertainment. Lots of business, lots of customers. It's all big stuff in the city. So what's the biggest little all about? On the corner of this busy Bloomington intersection, a few short blocks from Home Depot and about a mile from Mall of America, sits Johnson Hardware. Originally owned by Mr. Merritt Johnson, this little hardware has been here since World War II when it sold milking machines and bulk tanks to the dairy farmer. In the 1950s, suburban lifestyles and the store ownership changed. In the 50s, um, Harold Hargrove and Frank Bacon partnered up and bought the hardware store from Merritt Johnson. And they started selling shrubs and trees and sprinkler systems and lawnmowers and, you know, that post-war post era was anything you could get your hands on, you could sell. Johnson Hardware, since 1931, is now the oldest hardware store left standing in Bloomington. And it stays in business for several important reasons. Customers, satisfied customers, and returning customers. And some customers don't let their age or height get in the way. In order to fulfill the customer's needs though, you need parts, products, and, well, stuff. Lots of stuff. Stuff that's there just in case. Then you combine that inventory with knowledge and years of being a customer, and now you become an employee at Johnson Hardware. It's a continuing quest. Well, what makes Johnson Hardware different is, you know, we got all the odds and ends that other people don't have. Uh, I've been coming here for uh, uh, 32 years as a customer and was hired here as an employee uh, about a year ago. you'll find walls filled from floor to ceiling, a maze of aisles, hardly any open space that hasn't been filled with everything from a bottle of smelly dog spray to a really big rope on a big reel for maybe that tire swing on a tree in the backyard. Be it the hardware, the customers, or the fact that you're there making something work, there was something about the hardware business that caught owner Dan's passion when he was a young man. He was just 14. I went and uh, got a paper out, the Sun Papers, and well, did that for a little while, and then I was 14 and I could get a job at the stadium working for Sim Security. At that time, you couldn't get a job when you're 14 anywhere except for Sim Security at the Twins for the Twins ball games. So I had my pants and everything, my blue pants, my uniform. I'm going to start ushering people to their seats at Metropolitan Stadium. And uh, I laying at home watching TV and 
My dad came home from work and he said, hey, how would you like to get a job at the hardware store? And I says, well, I says, I never thought about working at the hardware store. I says, but he says, well, I think if you went down there, you might be able to get a job washing lawnmower parts. I said, okay, I could, I could do that. I says, I'll go down there tomorrow after school. And I was laying on my side watching TV and my dad kicked me so damn hard. He said, you'll go down there right now. So I got up and got on my bike, lived two and a half blocks away, rode down here and asked him if I could have a job at the hardware store. And he said, yep. And uh, I started the next day. Yep, Dan's dad is the one that kick started him into the hardware store business. And if you think that 14 is a young age to work at a store, what would you say about Dan wanting to buy the business when he was 16? Well, he had goals and saw what he thought was a rich owner who lived in a magnificent home in Edina. After all, anyone who had money lived in Edina, right? Dan decided to make an offer. And I thought, boy, if I could get that hardware store, I could have a house like this. You know, I'd be rich. Because I thought he was rich because he lived in Edina. Well, he wasn't rich. But in any event, uh, I, I saw that house and I wanted to have that, so I thought, well, you know, Harold's getting pretty old, maybe he'll sell me the store. I was 16 then and I said, hey, what are you gonna do with this place? Why don't you sell it to me? And he said, I just might. So we got together with the warehouse and some other people that experts on that stuff and a lawyer and we wrote up a conditional sales contract and I purchased 25% of it on a conditional sales contract when I was 16 years old. Meet Daisy, oftentimes moseying around Johnson Hardware to greet customers. Yes, Daisy has had a long career at the hardware. Well, Daisy's the, uh, basically the shop dog. He belongs to Dan, the owner. Don't really know how old Daisy is. I figure she's over 12 years old. Uh, you know, only barks if, uh, if we got food and she wants it. Kind of the friendly greeter, usually sleeping and or laying right where you want to walk. But wait, there's another customer greeter at the hardware. This one has feathers and comes to work every Sunday with her owner and Johnson Hardware staff member, Mitch, the Birdman Ivy. This is Phoebe. Phoebe's a good bird. I've had her for eight years. I bring her in once a week. Where she gets to meet her public. Sundays at Johnson Hardware is bird day. Step up. Good bird. Good bird. Good bird. Yes. If you bite. <laughs> she, she never bites. She doesn't really kiss. You kiss? She just looks adorable. What, what were the other, there's other brackets that have the same shape? I believe in public service and uh, people come in, they've got a problem. Their life is upside down. Their toilet is not working and it's my job to calm them down, find out what the problem is, come up with a solution entertain at the same time and hopefully uh, satisfy them, satisfy their needs and, and give them a reason to talk about Johnson Hardware at the dinner table. Guess what happened to me today at the hardware store? Uh, uh, are you parked in the front or near the back? It's in the back by the door. It's you've in the trunk. This, so if before. I could have someone help me yes. pull it out. Yes. Some of these big stores I don't like going because you can't find anyone to help you. Despite the onslaught of suburbia, big box stores, and the demise of personal service, Johnson Hardware has been clinging to the tradition of customer service like an old friend, and sometimes go above and beyond in helping a customer get what they need. You spent more than you got. I know. Yes. <laughs> well, you want to loan him? I'll loan you. I'll loan you 40 bucks. Okay. And then you owe me, okay? Okay. All right. There's, now you owe me 40 bucks. Okay. All right. Now... Does this biggest little hardware store have competition? Of course. And you may think it comes from the big box stores. At one time, that was true. But there's even a bigger competitor, 
and it's already inside many homes across the world. I think our biggest challenge right now is getting the younger person because the younger person is so internet oriented. You know, so the internet itself um, is probably our biggest threat rather than a big box store. Uh, just because the big box store, they're gonna have the same problems that we have. Meet Dan's mom. She's been helping at Johnson Hardware doing the bookkeeping for the past 20 years. She's now 85 and remembers the day back in the 1960s when Dan, still a teenager, talked about his goal. And it wasn't a new car or a date to the prom. It started way back when he was about 16 years old, 15, 16. His dad was uh, fishing. And I took the, he and his sister out to eat. And we took a walk. And he said, you know, Mom, someday I'm gonna own that place. And I thought, man, are you a dreamer. <laughs> and here he is. On the way to the lawyer's office, Harold, my partner, said to me, he said, Dan, are you sure you want to do this? He said, you know, I can give you all the money you've paid back if you'd like, but are you sure you want to do this? He says, you know, you're never going to make a lot of money. He said, you'll always have a place to go to work, but you're never going to make a lot of money. And I said to myself, in my mind, I said, you tired old SOB, I says, you wait till I get my hands on that store. I'm gonna make me some money. And uh, now, 50 years later, Harold was right, and I'm the tired old SOP. <laughs> and that's the story of the biggest little hardware store, Johnson Hardware in Bloomington, Minnesota. If you're in the neighborhood, stop by, look around, and say hi. You probably won't leave empty-handed.